Yeah, so just a short introduction about myself. Um, I am a Dutchie, not an Italian. I'm a Dutchie. Um, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't uh, have thought so. No, no, I know you've been talking about Dutchies quite a lot, so uh, um, sorry about joking because uh, someone has to do it. Um, I work for the Dutch Tax and Custom Administration as a specialist on open source software, especially within the Bureau of Open Source Software. We have a speci specific bureau. Uh, it's actually an OSPO, which we found out at a Linux event. Like, we have a bureau, it's actually an OSPO. Um, and within the Dutch Tax and Customs Administration, we have a couple of topics we talk about and a couple of topics we addressed the last three days already. Uh, we focus about the using of open source, so we should actually, as a um, public administration, should do it in the correct way. You should look at the policies, you should look at the licenses, you should look at how maintainable is the product you're using. So we created a, a checklist around that, so how to you properly use your uh, software to create useful insights, to create an overview of what kind of different software you're actually using in your organization. So as a public administration, it's quite important to know what you're actually doing. Uh, we focus also about contribution, already talked about it the last days, like if you're a correct user, you should also contribute back upstream to, your, to the product you're using. And that's a challenge. Uh, but the last one, the most important one, is the publishing of your own source code. As a tax administration, we are quite used to keeping everything internally and not focusing about bringing some stuff outside of our organization, so we are inside focused. Um, and the, the biggest goal for that is to open up the software, changing the mindset of all the different stakeholders within our organization to be able to know and um, validate that what we're doing is actually correct. And we do that by building guidelines and creating how-tos. So that's a little bit of focus on uh, what we're doing. Uh, so yes, yeah, so what we mentioned, uh, we built a checklist on um, what we're actually using. Um, we validating the maintainability of the project, we validating where, uh, who and when and how much is being uh, contributed to the projects, what kind of licenses are in there, um, but also what's the goal of the project. And secondly, um, do we already have it in our organization? That's also quite a big challenge. Um, last year, based on what we learned last year, we actually implemented the, um, uh, in our pipelines building S-bombs. So we're automating uh, creation of S-bombs within our organization. That's actually quite running okay and really fast. So for analy analyzing what we're actually using, um, also cross-platform, so different platforms. That was also a challenge, it's still a challenge, but it also worked. Um, and it's being automatically onboarded by our security team. So we actually got the security team actually uh, quite good involved with that, and they're really happy about it. Um, and also the big challenge is, well, if you want to publish, how do we need to publish that? So we have a process created about the publishing of our software. Security is also really involved in that, and they're really doing a quite a good job to do that. But if you look at what we're actually publishing, it's still empty. Um, yeah, uh, that's complicated. Um, <laughs> no, I, actually, I'm not allowed to, to... Well, that's a, a challenge of a public administration. We are not allowed to open, be open about when we're going to publish our software but it's not going to take long. <laughs> I wanted a date, but uh, it won't take long. Um, yeah, I also talked about a little bit of the S-bomb. This was also a picture taken last year, how and when to generate an S-bomb. So um, yes, we have a policy here. I've listened to the talk of the um, Swish law. We also have a law that called the Law Open Government, uh, which actually helps us quite a lot, but also brings challenges. It's a high level regulation but it doesn't focus on the how. So we had quite a lot of uh, challenges like how to implement it in our organization as a public administration. Um, it gives an idea, a rough idea of what you should do, but how? Um, it has effects on regulation, so um, yes, we need to open up. That's part of the law. It also gives us parts where we're, we're not uh, willing to open it because there are some exclusions in the policy. So yeah, you can dive behind that, um, but that's not what we want to do. Um, and the biggest question is how to implement what's actually being written. That's a challenge and I'll be facing that. Uh, well, I faced it already two years and I'll be facing that probably longer. 
if I listen to the uh, presentation you gave, Gabriel, uh, really clearly, then the goal of the Linux Foundation Europe is support local collaboration um, and make the software global. Well, that's my interpretation. Um, and that's something we actually started in, um, in Dublin two years ago with a couple of collaborations with Aliander. Uh, Jon is also there. Not sure if Thomas is in, no? But it's something we learned uh, as Dutchies together. Like we have a, a shared idea, a shared um, opinion on how we should do it. And uh, these are three examples of what actually happened last year. Um, the ones on the left is we uh, were able to set the standard, do a request for standardization within the Dutch government to have an SBOM uh, actually um, as a requirement within the Dutch government. So that we filed a request that every government should have an SBOM for a specific specification that they're able to create it, but also that could be a push, push to organizations to give us and provide us an SBOM. And the community we built based on what we learned the last years, we built a community around open source within the Dutch government. I believe it was is now 18 different organizations, so it's rapidly growing. We started with two, and now we have 18, so we're rapidly growing. And we have our own portal, um, developer portal from the Dutch government. They didn't translate it to English, but it's Dutch. So it has over 2,700 different repositories from the different uh, government entities. So it's rapidly growing. Uh, but also, it was really uh, a nice one, uh, based on the presentation we gave uh, in the beginning of the year on Ospology in Amsterdam, Ospology Live. Uh, there was a meeting with SURF, this organization of um, all the universities. So it's a combined organization for all the universities, middle schools, um, research centers, medical research centers, together combined in one organization. And we shared with them, so academia and uh, public administration, shared the different knowledges we had within our organization. So there was a common understanding. We are doing the same thing. They're looking at us. What are you doing? What's your focus area? Uh, and how ca can academia help us out or other way around? Um, so focusing on building the local um, community is really important. Looking at the EU collaboration, that's uh, a tough cookie to handle. Um, because we, there are quite a couple of different initiatives and are, they're doing a really good job. But keeping track of all of them as an organization is quite a challenge. So we have the European Commission Program Office which has a monthly call where as a member state you can share what you've been doing as a member state or what kind of project you're sharing as an OSPO. So that's actually really good. But then the question is how can all the difference be uh, implemented in your organization? That's still a challenge. Um, it's focused about OSPOs, public sector OSPOs, it's really good. And then you see the initiatives of European collaboration on digital commons. It's also, it feels like sort of parallel. Um, it's hard to track, but um, I do believe it's, it's a really good opportunity uh, and a good focus area. Um, I when I started in 2022 building an OSPO, I um, had a lot of questions. I had a lot of um, rough ideas on what we should do as a public administration and I just want to give a big shout out to the Tudor group because um, it really helped us out starting with building an open source program office. I don't think I should mention it because you already know but um, in the Netherlands I still keep referring like the OSPO, the Tudor group, um, even our Ministry of Internal Affairs also referring to that already. So based on the work, build on, building, sharing, um, shouting sometimes uh, about um, being involved in uh, the Linux Foundation is really helpful um, to change the mindset. It's actually changing a mindset. Uh, so uh, building a strategy uh, guides, but also it gives a challenge. And for the last couple of days, Mirko asked me, like, can you reflect on the last couple of days? There's still a challenge about policies, European policies. Um, which I'll dive a little bit deeper in, but there's a help question. Um, we do see opportunities, uh, collaboration on the digital public goods. What can we do as public administration? What are, are we developing? We, uh, are, as a large IT company with over three and a half thousand uh, developers, um, 
we have a lot of knowledge. We have a lot of IT guys. So, and girls, sorry. Um, so we should be able to create digital public goods. But again, how to open up from a closed organization to an open organization. So that's a challenge, but also an opportunity for us. Um, the challenge and the thing I learned the last couple of days, there is a lot of regulations. Um, um, we should create a policy. We're still working on a policy as a public administration. There is a guideline from our Ministry of Internal Affairs that said open unless but it doesn't say anything about a policy. And look into the regulations. We need help uh, and we see opportunities there. And yeah, looking at the last presentation, AI, uh, are we missing opportunities based on closing the functions we can use? Um, I think it's an opportunity. We're looking as an organization to opportunities, but it's making hard based on uh, regulations. Um, and that came to me by like, the idea of the last couple of days, like um, we should create a com community. It should be good to create a community based around the different public administrations within the different EU countries. Um, that it's a good opportunity for us to share the knowledge we have, uh, get some knowledge from, for example, the, the uh, Interoperability Act or the work you've been doing as a Linux Foundation Europe to translate into a policy for us as a public administration. So we, yes, we do the work ourselves, but we need a lot of help from you guys. Um, so this is soil. It's a small plant. It's hopefully next year there's gonna be a small tree or a big tree or a lot of trees or a forest. Um, I don't know. Uh, so coming back to the original question you had, actually it's complicated. It depends. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but if I ask two colleagues uh, which are lawyers, lawyer, it depends. I asked ChatGPT with the Dali, can you create an image of the Dutch government? Um, um, with the text, it depends. Uh, and I think it made a decision, it is complicated. Uh, and it created, well, it, it, it depends and it depends to predict. So, um, <laughs> so. <laughs> I think there's still work, uh, and hopefully next year we'll have a, 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 f a small forest or a small tree or, a, or maybe a forest, big forest. Thank you very much.